Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be the silent battles of the narcissistic relationship. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, share, and pay it forward. Help someone out who perhaps could use the video. Remember, at one point you were a newbie to the community. So I'll jump right in. The silent battles of the narcissistic relationship. These are sprinkled throughout the whole relationship from the minute you met the narcissist up into and including post-narcissistic relationships, specifically if the relationship has ended recently and you are trying to block the narcissist or divorce the narcissist or relocate or basically get untethered from the narcissistic relationship. There are many silent battles and here we go. When you were in the relationship with the narcissist, remember, it was advantage narcissist throughout the whole relationship until you found my channel, until you got that first nugget of wisdom, until you became awakened and educated, enlightened and empowered. What that means is you did not know what you were up against, what you thought this individual was or who you thought they were, were a like-minded individual like you are. In other words, you thought that they had your best interest at heart. Nothing, and I mean nothing, could be further from the truth. The truth of the matter is the narcissist looked at you and virtually everybody else on the planet as an opportunity. How to gain access to individuals, how to get one over on individuals, how to take resources from individuals, how to make other individuals make them look better. Basically what the narcissist wants to do is they want to leapfrog from relationship to relationship always improving their circumstances. Play that again. That's what they want to do. That is why so many times when you're in these relationships with a toxic individual, i.e. a narcissist, they are one person to the general public. Perhaps they are ad adored at their workplace or adored by the neighborhood community or adored in religious organizations or communities. But behind the, the four walls of the house of your living arrangements, they are toxic, nasty individuals who will give you the silent treatment for days or weeks on end. They will gaslight you. They will taunt you, meaning they will tempt you to leave the relationship. They'll say like that they're paying their bills, their, your bills for you or they're supporting you and they will dare you to make life challenging decisions. Like example, they will say that you won't amount to anything or that you're nothing without them or that they paid for uh, pizza 15 years ago but they're still holding it against you. Get my point. This is what these people want to do. They want to disrupt your energy and they do not want you to become yourself again. Now, throughout the body of the relationship, there were many silent battles. Think about this. Think about the events you attended with the narcissist. Maybe they were graduations. Maybe they were weddings. Maybe they were barbecues. Maybe they were holidays or birthday events. Many times the narcissist would do what before these key moments? That's right. They would create an intentional argument. They would throw a rage fit. They would disrupt your energy so you could not attend the event A at all, or B, you would attend the event, but you would not be living in the moment. You would be thinking about how they just destroyed that day for you before you attended the event. Think about it. These are not coincidences. Remember, there's no such thing as a coincidence on this planet. Everything happens for a reason. And one of the silent battles you had when you were with the narcissist, or perhaps you still are with them, is that you had to prepare for let's say special events or holidays. You knew that around crunch time or even vacations or your birthday, you knew around these key events that the narcissist would try to disrupt them because you started to notice the patterns. You started to notice that before anything that was important to you, the narcissist would throw a monkey wrench in the equation. They would disrupt your energy, but you couldn't put your finger on it because you weren't taught this in school. You did not know what you were up against. You thought that your partner perhaps was just having some stability issues. Maybe they weren't quite in the best state of mind. Understatement. Point being, when you figure out that these were part of the silent battles the narcissist was inflicting upon you, in other words, they did not want you to enjoy your birthday or holidays or vacations. They wanted to disrupt them and they actually got pleasure from your pain. Play that again. It's a fact. Keep in mind, the narcissist relishes in positive or negative supply. In other words, how you are full feeling. Your emotional stability or lack thereof is imperative upon the narcissist regulation. In other words, again, if the narcissist is trying to put you in a bad mood and they succeed, well, again, that disrupts your energy. It has you not been in a good mental or uh, spiritual or physical state of mind, let's put it that way, uh, being, but it elevates them because now they just controlled how you are feeling. 
this is all it is with the narcissist. It is a silent battle, many times a vocal battle also between you and the narcissist. Think about this one, when you would be having a, you would try to have an adult conversation with the narcissist. I'm talking a flat out peaceful conversation, kind of like I'm speaking right now, that you two would sit down, have a cup of coffee, and just try and work out things. Maybe it was the bills, maybe it was the house, the, the color of the house that you were gonna paint. Maybe it was where to go vacation. Maybe it was how to raise the kids. Maybe it was what you or they were doing with their time, whatever. But you wanted to have an, an intelligent adult conversation. What would happen? You couldn't do that. You found yourself going from a zero, meaning talking nice and politely and being stoic and calm like I am right now, to a 10. And next thing you know, you were screaming or explaining yourself or asking them to listen to you, to pay attention to you. What was that? I'll tell you what that was. That was, that was a petulant child, i.e. your spouse who was probably knowing exactly what they were doing, gobbling up your supply, and you guys never had that adult conversation. In other words, you may have had it or thought you had it, but it always turned sideways rather quickly. And the longer your relationship went on, the less frequently you wanted to communicate with this individual, i.e. the narcissist, because you realized that you never make progress. What they do is they just relish in you trying to explain yourself or getting emotional or asking them why they don't listen to you or why they don't just do what they're supposed to do. This is how they get supply, positive or negative supply. Think about what I'm sharing. And I also mentioned to you on the channel recently that I believe that the narcissist prefers negative supply from individuals, empaths, or people that don't have the awareness on the narcissistic abusive cycle. And I stand by that and I'll tell you why. Because the narcissist vibration is naturally a low vibration. They vibrate in the quagmire, super low. And they need to steal someone's positive bright light or beautiful energy, which was your energy for a period of time, which was the length of the relationship. And when they can have you vibrating low down with them, in other words, not believing in yourself, doubting yourself, becoming an extension of the narcissist, perhaps even taking on some of their poor characteristics. In other words, being baited and experiencing reactive abuse or being baited and raising your voice, you're, you're, not, you're now vibrating down low with them and they love that because what have they done? They've turned a beautiful bright light, which was you, into now a neg negative vibrating individual who vibrates down with them, and that is an energy shift. Believe me when I tell you, if they can do that, in other words, if they can dim your light, they love it. They love that more than almost anything. Well, except for your money, let's put it that way. But the point being, and when they can control, i.e. the narcissist can control how you feel, how you express yourself, if they pay attention to you, if they don't, if they just give you lip service, or if they give you word salad, whatever they do, when they when they do that, that's a silent, silent battle that's going on between you and the narcissist, and you couldn't figure it out. Now, as the relationship went on, it certainly deteriorated, and you know that now. Many of you have broken free from the narcissist. If you have, please drop comments below. Help the newbies out on the channel. And for the newbies, welcome to the community. God bless you. This is gonna be a journey. Remember, the healing path is not linear. It will take time, and in your time, you will heal with the proper tools, with the wise advice and counsel from the community, and from knowing that this was not your fault. Play that again, it was not your fault. You were manipulated, you were taken advantage of, but now you're getting awakened and you're becoming awakened and aware. And you're understanding that you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. But getting back on track, the people that are in these narcissistic relationships that are not the narcissist, they don't know what they're up against until they do. Going back to that chess analogy, the narcissist had, had three steps. If you're playing a, a, a game of chess with the narcissist, as an example, when you first met them, they got to move their chess piece three different moves, one, two, three, and it was a huge advantage for them throughout the whole game, i.e. the relationship, until you figured out who they were, then it's checkmate and you win. Now, relationships are not games. I've said that many times on my, career, on my videos, but the point being, with the narcissist they are, relationships are opportunities, they're games. Remember, the narcissist plays a game of accumulation, accumulating money, accumulating people, accumulating relationships, acc accumulating your time, accumulating anything that's of importance to you. And they, you could also say accumulation by devastation, which means, it, let's say that you had 100 people that you surrounded yourself with before you met the narcissist. Well, what did the narcissist do? Most likely they tried to and or succeeded in div dividing you in those relationships. In other words, they drove wedges between you and those people that you cared about. That is accumulation by devastation. They are destroying your relationships and they're accumulating more and more of those chess pieces. Get the message. I know I'm talking quickly, but there's so much to unpack. The point being, there are silent battles that go on throughout the relationship. Think about this one. Let's say that you got discarded or the relationship ended, or you're looking to exit the relationship, any of those three. Perhaps today you're pondering, should you stay in the relationship? Who knows? Maybe it just ended for you yesterday. Maybe it's about to end for you in a couple weeks. The point being, 
This is another silent battle. Saying, let's, as an example, let's say that you're trying to get out of the relationship or considering it. Well, now you are thinking, am I gonna make a move? I know what I'm up against. I know who my spouse is. I know who this relative is, whoever it is. Maybe it's not a spouse. Maybe it's an aunt, uncle, mom, dad, brother, sister, whomever. But you're trying to figure out a way to get out of it. Now that's a silent battle because you are thinking to yourself, what should I do? Should I stay in it or should I exit it? What's the, better, what's the best for me? Well, I'll tell you right now what the best for you is. It's to remove yourself from the relationship as long as you are self-sufficient and you understand that the narcissistic relationship, once you've identified that you're in one, staying in it one minute longer than you need to is not the path. You need to get your energy back. You need to heal. You need to learn to grow, to teach. If you can become educated, awakened, and aware and understand that this person, all they want to do is steal your energy and your resources. But getting back on point, that's a silent battle you'll have. Another silent battle when the narcissist hoovers you and remember, if you accept a Hoover, not a wise idea, especially once you get the wisdom. If you don't, if you didn't have the wisdom, you accepted a Hoover, I get it, but you should learn from that and don't accept a Hoover again. But the point is, let's say the narcissist is trying to contact you for whatever reason, that's a silent battle. Should I answer the text? Should I block them? Should I tell these flying monkeys that I want nothing to do with them? What should I do? These are all questions you will ask yourself and so many more on the healing path. You will have to decide what's going on. Another one. Let's say that you're isolated now and you're in your house and it, you are free from the narcissist, but you're in your house. Well, should you reach out to friends or family members and explain to them what you just went through? Will they understand? Will they be there for you? Can they put themselves in your shoes? Do they know what a narcissist is? These are silent battles you will have. Another one, you can't go to sleep at night. Well, I experienced that too for quite a long period of time, but you, this again is the healing path. You will have challenges and each and every day won't be each and every day will be unique to itself, put it that way. But when you can't sleep, that's another silent battle. What do you do with your time? Do you lay there in bed and ruminate? Do you get out a journal and start writing out your thoughts, which is exactly what I would suggest? Do you put in one of my videos and become educated? Do you go for a walk if you can, or exercise? Do you go to your favorite chair and, and just read? What do you do with your time? The whole point is what I'm sharing with you is there are silent battles sprinkled all throughout the relationship and post relationship as well. These are battles. How about rumination? Let's take that. Let's say the relationship ended for you five, six, seven, ten years ago. Well, are you still thinking about the narcissist every now and again? If you are, that means to me that you have some more healing to do. It's not a bad thing. It just means that you still, if you're ruminating years later, I believe you still have some work to do. And if you are, if you have the ability to journal, to meditate, to process childhood wounds, to really address the relationship that you were part of, then my hope is you will get through the rumination. That's a whole different video. But the point, what I'm sharing, and I'm unpacking a lot again, is that the healing path is for you. It's not one size fits all. Anyone who tells you that you will be able to heal from narcissistic abuse in a certain period of time or a specific period of time does not know what they are talking about. They did not go through it. That is a fact. And what I'm sharing with you also is think about you, myself, anyone in your life or anyone you're considering. We all have a separate fingerprint, don't we? Yes, we do. And that is for a reason because we are all built differently. We all come from different cultures, speak different languages, have different hair color. We have different knowledge of the planet because our life experiences are what has made us us. Un understand what I'm sharing with you. So why I'm saying that is because now couple that with, with the narcissistic relationship and healing your path is unique to yourself. Remember, we are all on the healing path headed in the same direction, simply taking different footsteps. You may be way in front of me. You may be behind me. You may be right beside me. Who knows? The point is we are all looking to heal and it takes time and in our time, we will heal. So remember, there's no magic wand. There's no pill you can take and there is no way anyone can tell, tell you when you will heal. You will heal the morning you wake up and you say, oh my goodness. I feel incredible, I feel great. And that rolls into tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and you keep going. In other words, when the narcissist becomes tiny, you drown them out, you process what you need to, you have no more silent battles, you've reached the pinnacle, the mountaintop of indifference, and now you don't care about the narcissist. You wish them the best, but just stay away from me. That's what you say, because you had to go through that lifelong learning lesson, and it was challenging. It almost took you down for the count, but guess what? You are here. You are becoming awakened and aware, which I've mentioned frequently on the video, to let you know and illustrate and reinforce that you are now a changed individual. You are now in or, and or entering the third version of you, which is the strongest, most versatile, galvanized version of you you will ever find. Remember. 
there are three versions of you. The version of you before you met the narcissist, the version of you, that, that's version number one. Version number two is when you're in the narcissistic relationship, being abused virtually each and every day. And number three is post-narcissistic relationship once you've healed. That is the third version of you. If you're there, welcome to your new life. If you are almost there, keep moving forward. If this is the first video you're ever consuming or if you, the relationship just ended recently, remember, you will have a lot of work in front of you. You will have a mountain of work. It will be daunting, it will be challenging, but you will succeed. You will get to where I am. You will have to be patient, stoic, calm, courageous, centered. You will have to be as strong as you possibly can and break that trauma bond, which again, for a different video. But the silent battles in the narcissistic relationship, they're everywhere. Think about this one. Let's say that you have children together with the narcissist and the narcissist is supposed to show up for the, one of your child's birthday parties and they don't show up. Well, what are you gonna do there? Are you gonna tell the child, yes, that your spouse didn't show up because they're a toxic narcissist? Of course you're not. You're gonna to have to cover for the narcissist and that's on purpose. Perhaps the narcissist is too busy doing something else, which most likely they were, that benefited them and they didn't care about the children. Think about it, that happens each and every day. That's, a, that's another aspect of the narcissistic relationship. Remember, anything that's important to you or your family members, many times the narcissist A won't attend, or B, they will make it about them, or C, they'll blow up that event, or any combination of those three things. There is so much wisdom to unpack. A 18 minute video can't do it justice, but I'm just letting you know that there are so many silent battles you'll have when you're in the narcissistic relationship and post-narcissistic relationship. And you may ask this question, well, what happens after you've reached that pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference? Are there any silent battles then? I will tell you right now, life is not linear. Sometimes we have great periods of life, sometimes we do not. It, it flows kind of like water going down a stream. You never know which way anything's gonna, gonna go for each and every one of us. But when you reach that pinnacle of indifference, I can assure you those silent battles dissipate. They're virtually gone. They really sincerely are. And the reason why I say almost gone or virtually gone is because every once in a while, you will have a light bulb moment. This is my experience. And a light bulb moment will shed a new idea as to what happened in the past. In other words, maybe you will be just walking down the street and you'll hear a song and you'll think, of, you'll think about when you were in the relationship and then you'll couple that song with an experience and then that will take you down a rabbit hole of another individual who isn't the narcissist, but then you're like, oh, that's what that meant. In other words, you're still, you will still put pieces of the puzzle together for the rest of your life, I can assure you that. There's a big difference though between you post-narcissistic relationship, like specifically right after it has ended, when you have to put yourself back together and you have to figure out things because you're craving the knowledge and you're craving the information because the narcissist won't give you closure. So you have to do all of this work just like you had to throughout the body of the relationship. You had to do all the heavy lifting. The narcissist was just there for the ride. But there's a huge difference between that and when you've healed years later or whenever you heal and then all of a sudden you're living your best life and then you hear a song and you're like, oh, I remember that, what was that? Oh, that's what that meant. See, that's a light bulb moment that you weren't expecting, but yet you explored it, then you processed it, you thought about it, you let it go, and you continue on that pinnacle of indifference, that mountaintop of indifference, you continue living your best life. And you just say, okay, I get it. That was then, this is now. I, it was a huge lesson, I learned it. Now I am way wiser than I was before because this has changed me forever. Went off on a tangent there, but I hope you understand. So. My hope is this video is giving you wisdom, education, and it's helping you along the healing path. Guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning. No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Remember that. You are not alone. God bless you. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye, you guys.